Rub up your engines! Big Mike 06615 says, I got complaints about my 2017 Silverado. Scotty, where do I go to make complaints about all the problems I'm having with this truck? I have a friend with the same truck as me and both had head units that turn off randomly and won't come back on, back click buttons go bad at 60,000 miles, and the clunky transmission. I need someone to complain to. Thanks. Well, here you are complaining to me. The whole world can watch it in this video now. Like I said, hey, an old one Silverado 1500 could have been a great truck. The new ones? absolute rolling piles of junk their quality's gone and i just made a video about how gm's having a hard time hiring temporary workers to build their vehicles in their factories bad enough that they got regular workers that don't care get some temporary guy comes in think he cares about what kind of work is done no they don't you're never going to get any satisfaction from gm they don't care you already bought the vehicle you can get your own satisfaction by telling people like me i'll tell the world we still have power as consumers. Don't buy the products if they stink. That's how you vote. Don't ever buy another one. Guess what? There goes the company if nobody buys their stuff. They can talk all they want. They can spend fortunes in ads. But if people say, boy, that ad's a joke. That's the crappiest vehicle I ever had. People won't buy them. Then that's the end of them making crappy vehicles. It doesn't seem that people complaining does any good because all they do is put more ads on and say how great their crappy products are. But yeah, you came to the right place. Not everybody knows. You and your friend both have 17 Silverados and you hate them. They're both piles of junk. <laughs> Don't buy one. <laughs> that's how you get even with those companies. Do not buy the products that they make because if you buy the products that they make and they're crappy, they'll continue to make them even crappier. Let the buck stop here. Don't buy crappy products. You see something that breaks? Don't buy it again. Tell your friends, boy, it's the crappiest thing I ever had. Don't buy it. Don't buy it. And then either the companies go out of business or they'll make them better. I kind of doubt GM's ever going to make anything better. It's a monster with a cut off head. Everything's politically correct these days, you know. Blah is what I say to that. It's a competitive world out there. You want to be politically correct go right ahead if you can't make your vehicles to me that's politically incorrect you're selling people something that you should get worse when you buy a product and you don't but they keep it all all their ads are politically correct you know blah blah that's all i gotta say just like i said the other day the president of the gm said oh now we're gonna work with the government to pollute less with our cars well when trump was in she said the exact opposite oh yeah we agree with donald we need to stop all this regulation of pollution on our vehicles now they spun the other way so yes <laughs> <laughs> don't buy their products and then you won't have to listen to their crap anymore if they go out of business. Jersey Mike 3 says, Scotty, I commute to work 103 miles a day. I'm thinking about getting a Toyota Camry or waiting to get the new Maverick. What do you think is a better choice? All right. Camrys have been out there forever. They run great. Buy the Camry. No one knows about this new Ford Maverick. Yes, it's cute. And they claim it's starting at $19,995. Less than twenty grand, right? But it's got Ford's new electric hybrid their own motor system that's brand new who knows if it's going to work and guess where it's made mexico a new vehicle with a new system made in mexico i wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole where have they been out a few years i guarantee you they're going to have problems up the wazoo maybe they'll fix them eventually maybe they won't but you want dependability get the camry don't even think about buying a new ford that's got a new design that's made in mexico that would be a big mistake i had a bunch of customers back in the past they bought those pt cruisers they look cool blah blah they were all made in pueblo mexico and they were rolling piles of crap. They don't make them anymore. So who knows what the Mavericks are going to be, but you drive that kind of miles, get a Camry, you'll be happy. It'll be running forever. But the thing is, you're talking about getting a new Camry versus the Maverick. Well, it costs a lot more than a Maverick. You're not going to carry me for 20 grand. <laughs> but I wouldn't buy one. There's too much ifs. Too many ifs in the air for that. Karen G says, I want to be a do-it-yourselfer. What tools should I buy? I don't want to pay too much, but I don't want junk. Tools are made all over the place, right? You can go to lots of different tool places. You don't want to get junk tools, but you don't want to overpay like outrageously priced snap-on tools. It just costs too much. My advice is go to a place like AutoZone. They sell tool sets and they have a a good brand called Duralast. You'll pay a little bit more for the Duralast, but they come with a lifetime warranty. So especially like when I lived in Houston, it was an auto zone three blocks from my house and they were good tools. And if one ever was broken or lost, you go three blocks. If it's broken, they'll give you another one free. If you lost, you can buy another one right off the bat. And they're pretty good quality. Now, if you want to go a little cheaper, you can go to Harbor Freight Tools. Some of their stuff is good. Some of their stuff is cheap. Now, I have impact sockets big ones that I got at Harbor Freight Tools. They work fine because they're big, heavy steel. You don't care when they're big. As long as they're steel, they're usually pretty good. The smaller sets, you don't want to buy the ones that are cheap 
made in Pakistan or India or the cheap Chinese ones. You want to get relatively quality ones. And like I say, the Duralast ones at AutoZone, they're pretty high quality tools and they are a lifetime warranty too. So if it ever breaks, you get another one free. Plus they're just down the street to most people. There's an AutoZone around. And then if you lose a tool like I do, you just go there and get another one right when you need it. There it is. Sunshine 2006 says my engine burns oil. I got no nine Corolla. I had a quart per thousand miles. I learned it's a design defect. Do I still need to change the oil every 5,000 miles even though I'm adding new oil. I use a good oil filter rated for 15,000 miles. Will the car die too soon? Can I do anything about it? Well, you can complain to Toyota because they did fix a lot of engines, but by now it's getting to be so old, generally it won't cover anything. Now, I've had customers, my grandson's got a Camry with the same engine, does the same thing, burns oil. He's been driving it for ages that way, just adds oil. Now you'll have to change your spark plugs more often and eventually it will kind of clog up your catalytic converter and make it uh, trip code so you can't get your car inspected. But here we're in Clarksville, Tennessee, they don't do emissions testing, so no one cares. You just keep driving the car. I've never seen them actually, as long as you keep adding the oils, it burns. I've never actually seen them stop running. It was just because the piston rings weren't made right, so they burn oil. That's just how it goes. The oil control rings aren't good, so they burn oil. That's just what happens with them. But you want to continue to change the oil because it's still getting dirty. You said you're using Mobile One, that's a good oil. You know, I mean, if you want to go a little cheaper, use the synthetic oil from Walmart. They have their own brand. It's excellent. It costs a lot less. Use that oil. It'll still burn burn oil, but there's really nothing you can do other than change the PCV valve. That might be making it work a little bit worse and they only cost 10 bucks. Change the PCV valve, but if that doesn't fix it, just live with it. It's a Corolla. It will still run for quite some time. Just remember to keep adding oil as it burns because I had a customer who did and they blew their engine because we used to Toyota and they never checked the oil and they ran it till it ran out of oil and then blew up. So keep adding the oil, keep running. Karan said, Scotty, I've watched lots of YouTube videos. Can we skip buying 3.8 socket set and just buy half inch? set only. No, I wouldn't advise that because 3.8, they're smaller. They're easier to access into places. To tell you the truth, when I'm working on cars, 95% of the time I'm using 3.8 sockets. I only use the half inch ones when I'm doing big heavy work because you need bigger, heavier sockets. Unless you're working with all the time 19 millimeter and above sockets, big ones, you don't need a big old arm and big sockets. The regular ones that go from like six millimeter to 19 millimeter 3.8 drive, hey, they work perfectly fine. And of course, let's say you don't have enough torque. Your socket's like that big and then you got your little ratchet that's the 3 8 ratchet. Hey, get a piece of pipe, stick it onto the end of the ratchet, make it longer, you'll be able to break stuff loose. Actually, the 3 8 are the most handiest, most used ones. I wouldn't swap them out for a half inch set. Half inch sets are too big, they're bulky. Let's say I've got half inch sets that have like 10 millimeter sockets, right? Well, 10 millimeters are kind of small. You can never even fit that whole wrench in for where most of them are. Sometimes I've even got to go down to a quarter inch socket to get to those things. So no, no, you're better off with 3 8 actually. B-King says, I've CVT engines, okay, with a hybrid vehicle. Okay, you mean CVT transmissions. And if they're made right, of course they are. Now, if you're talking about Nissan, they make crappy CVTs. I wouldn't buy a Nissan like that. But the Toyota Prius has always had a CVT transmission. That's how it can get the gasoline motor and the electric motor to feed the same drivetrain. So they're excellent, the Toyota Priuses. They rarely break down. They're really good. But depends on the manufacturer too, not just the design itself, but who's building it. Well, check this out. There's incredible tiny camper van that's now coming to America. It's one of these Stellantis things. It's based on the Fiat Ducato van platform, which in the United States is the Ram Pro Master, so it's allowed to be sold in the United States. It's 17 feet, six inches long, so it's not these big, gigantic, hard-to-drive vans. It's, you know, pretty easy to drive. It's a Class C camper van. Somehow this tiny little van has a full blown standard bathroom with a shower, toilet and sink. Has a removable dining room table which they claim four or five people can squeeze around. They'd really be squeezing in. <laughs> Now it has a lot of headspace, so it's got a retractable bed on the top too, which is a memory foam mattress on a wooden pad. Memory foams are pretty comfortable. So the Wingam OC540 is supposed to be fall of this year, coming to the United States. The only thing is they haven't listed the price yet. So you're gonna have to hang on to see how much money they want for these things and do realize. <laughs> maybe not the most reliable van in the world. Small? Maybe we like this van may be unreliable, but at least it's small. <laughs> It's cute looking. I got to give them that. A lot of people, oh, the vans are too big. They can't drive it around. For a couple of people, it might be a cute little thing to go camping around in. But then again, it is based on a Fiat. So who knows how long this thing would actually last before it fell apart. I can't wait to see in the fall if they actually do start selling them here on what they cost. 
So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.